Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to remove a background without using the green screen by using AI. So I'm going to show you two methods and compare them to each other. One's going to be a paid method using a plugin called Goodbye Green Screen, and the other's going to be a free method using robust video matting through Google Colab. I will show you both versions and you'll get to see the differences between them. And I'll also talk about the benefits of using one over the other. So let's get right into it. So here I shot a video of my wife and I had her just kind of move around. With this video, I try to put myself in a situation where it would be a nightmare to have to rotoscope all of this. A lot of stuff going on in the background. I think it would probably confuse the roto brush a lot, just kind of messing around with this. Like all these little things in the background is just messing, messing you up and then you can run it for a little bit, but you're gonna run into other issues once you see a little bit more movements. I don't wanna deal with all that, right? How can we get rid of this background so that we can, whatever you wanna do, run it like through Stable Diffusion or like add a background or do something with it where you just need the background to not be there. So I'm gonna start off with the goodbye green screen. There's a method where it will do it. It will try to mask this out automatically. As you can see, this plugin really takes a lot of processing, unfortunately. Honestly, this is something that I always have an issue with this, but it works pretty decently still. As you can see, it did remove the background. You see already some issues right here, how it's removing part of the fingers. And I, I'm not really expecting this to be perfect because I think it's, it's very difficult to really get great results without using a green screen, right? You already see like, it's picking up all this stuff in the background and you can uh, mess around with the settings here. Right now it says uh, generic, I switched it to human and then it, the, hand is, <laughs> the hand is not there no more. Uh, let's try portrait. Okay, portrait uh, gave us a little bit better results. Let's try webcam. So typically this can do a good job if you just have footage and you're like, I, I need to get rid of the background. This does a decent job. The next thing I wanna do is, let's say you have an opportunity to set up a shot and you have your camera on a tripod. In this case, I would just duplicate this layer and I have the whole background here without the subject. And uh, on the bottom one, I'm just gonna freeze the frame right there so it doesn't show anything after that. And then on this top layer, I'm going to put goodbye green screen again. And this time, I'm gonna go to background. I'm gonna tell you what match perspective does, but in this case, since it's on the tripod, I don't need to use that. And then right here where it says background layer, I'm going to go to the bottom one as the source. So now if I move all the way over here, and then I remove this background on the bottom, it's gonna to try to remove the background. Mess with the engine. Basically what engine does is it, how many computations the AI will run on the footage and refine amount is refined of the edges, like how clean the edges look. It's not really doing, the, like such a great job moving the background. You see when I re reduce the, the engine, it actually does take away some of the background. When I make it higher, it seems to bring it back in. But essentially when you use the, this, this method and use the background, what it tries to do is it looks at the background by itself. When, when something comes into the frame, it only shows that new thing that comes into the frame and re removes the background. Okay, now let's try this with the handheld shot. So here I'm gonna again, to freeze this frame right here in the bottom. And so on the top frame, I'm going to put goodbye green screen again, and I'm gonna go the background and then again, the bottom one. So this is a really cool feature. When, it, when you put match perspective, it adds all these um, match points. And even though this is handheld, it's still keeping track of the background, which is very cool. This is the freeze frame and this is the moving frame. And so there are all these matching points right here you can see, and that's what's helping guide it. And you can even see it moving around and warping a little bit. Let me go back to the results so you can see the results. And what can improve some of these results also is if uh, you come here to maximum match points, you can add more match points and as you can see it just keeps adding. But this obviously comes at a cost of performance because it has to process a lot more. But basically you can add all these match points to help get better results. So this is the handheld shot, I'm not using a tripod. It's doing a decent job for this one. Uh, you're seeing some of this stuff up here not going away, but you can technically just mask this out and then you don't have that anymore. You have a decent background removal. And then I have the one where I'm using a tripod and this one, 
weirdly enough, is not as good as the handheld shot. And I would think that the tripod shot would actually look better because there's not any movement going on. It doesn't look as clean. Maybe there's some settings I can mess around with. This just takes so long to process that it really doesn't, uh, I'm not really encouraged to want to mess too much with the settings because it, I can't really see what it looks like until I fully export it because or else I'm just waiting for it to render and it just takes so long. That's the downside of using this tool. So I do want to test out something that this tool can probably help out in certain situations. In a little bit, I'm going to talk about the other AI method that I use that gives me really good results. But uh, unfortunately, it only t detects humans. It doesn't really detect like animals and objects and stuff like that. But I think this is really where Goodbye Green Screen really does shine. The shot where I bring in this little ghost from Mario into the shot. I want to see if it really does just remove the background from this and just detects my hand and then this because it's not in this shot. Yeah, I'm gonna see what kind of results this gives me. Freeze frame this one, goodbye green screen, background, and then the bottom one. Let's see if it uh, really does something here. Okay, yeah. So I think this is really where goodbye green screen shines because it doesn't try to detect if it's human or not, it just detects if it's part of the background or not. It's not perfect though, as you can see right here, it is removing this, but I, I wonder if I mess around with some of the settings, um, if it will make a little bit of a difference. Yeah, it does medium. Yeah, I think that goodbye green screen really uh, does a good job in that in that sense. As you can see, goodbye green screen is quite expensive. It's eighty dollars. I'm about to show you right now another method which doesn't cost eighty dollars, where you can remove the background really fast and easy. Yeah, let's do that right now. So the second method I, I'm going to be using is from Robust Video Matting. You can install this on your PC if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you do want to install it on your PC, I would recommend you watch a video by, by Cloud Dump. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, he has a video right here that's installing tutorial right here, Robust Video Matting, and he teaches you how to install it. But I'm going to show you how to use it in Google Colab because this is a little bit more universal if you don't have a PC. And it's also very easy to use it in Google Colab. Uh, so click on the link that's in the description and you come here to the site and you come here to where it says demo and then where it says Colab demo. You open that. You can do two methods here, two options. You can just try to do it directly here. You click on here and it tells you to upload a video from your computer and then you can download it down here. If you want it to save on your Google Drive, then do it this other method I'm gonna show you. So you go to mount drive right here. It's gonna ask to, to mount to your drive right here. So you just click on display. It's gonna ask if you wanna permit it to run and just connect to your Google Drive, your email, allow. And so it's gonna run. And then on, on here on the left side, you're gonna start, you're gonna see the folder and you wanna create in your Google Drive a folder. I just call it uh, RVM and I put some videos I wanna put in there. So then your drive is gonna pop up here and then you look for this folder right here, my drive, RVM. So right here where this has this video, you're gonna copy the path, all right? So then you come down here, can ignore these, come here to where it says start inference and then you press where it says pip install, that's gonna be installing. And then right here you press import while that's installing. Uh, this will go next and while that's going you can come down here and your video input is gonna be that link You just copied from your drive you paste it and it's gonna be right here video test and you want it to save Wherever you want it to save but to make it easy I'm gonna save it to that same folder and I'm so I'm gonna put the same name, but just change it right here Just call it uh, uh, like out. I'm gonna show you what the alpha and the foreground is for now, just take away this and just make sure it just says pha dot mp4, same here. Just paste it, just remove the mp4 because it's already here at the end. Just so you can uh, differentiate these three files right here. I'm gonna show you what each file means, but for now, just put it the same uh, and just make sure that it ends with something different right here so that they don't all have the same names. I believe this has to do with the quality of it. You can put it like uh, whatever quality you want to put it and sequence chunks 12. Uh, it might take a little longer if you put this higher. So just be aware of that. Yeah, so once that's done and all this is done up here, you just click here and it's going to take a bit of time, but it's not going to take as long as uh, Goodbye Green Screen does. Like it 
this works pretty fast. And you can go back to your folder here and then you're gonna see it load into here. There's the PHA, there's the out. This is finally done. All the files are in my drive right here. Uh, I'm just gonna access it from my local drive. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what it basically did. So this is the original footage, right? This is the footage uh, and it places a green screen already on it. So it's pretty cool. This is the output with the green screen in the back already. As you can see, there, there are some little artifacts still right here. It's not perfect. You see, like all this. So these other files that I was talking about, like the alpha, uh, shows you like a matte version of this. I'm pretty sure that this has some uses for certain cases. Um, I think it's pretty cool that it gives you the option to even export this. And then this foreground one is just like a demonstration of what's happening within this footage. Like this is really what is capturing all this. And the, this is like considers it the background. Just looks kind of like kind of crazy looking. It works really good. I even did this, this Mortal Kombat one. Just look at the results. Like to me, it looks, it's incredible how fast it exported all this. In the recent video I did of the Mortal Kombat animation, I actually used the goodbye green screen and a little bit of rotoscoping to clean it up. It took me so long to get that done. But once I used this, like it did this like so fast within minutes and it's not perfect. I would still have to refine some of this, but I think it looks pretty clean in my opinion. You still see like these little artifacts there, right there. But considering the fact that the AI is trying to, you know, do this without using the green screen, I mean, I think is impressive. And this can really, really help you out. Ideally, you would want to shoot this on a green screen, but you know, if you have a video where you didn't shoot on a green screen or you were giving the footage where someone asked you, hey, we got to get rid of the background or somehow, or you just want to use a clip that already exists on YouTube or something or from a movie and you just want to remove a background. These are some methods that can help you out. Obviously, they're not the perfect solution, but they can help out when you're in a tight spot. I definitely use these tools, especially with all the animations that I've been doing with AI has been really helpful to remove the background. And I'm sure there's other methods out there and I would love to hear about them. Let me know about any other tools that are out there that accomplish the same thing and maybe even better than what I just showed. Uh, I would love to learn about that. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you everybody who has been supporting me on Patreon. It really does help me when people support through either Patreon or liking the video, commenting or sharing it with people. I love doing this and I would love to dedicate more time to this. So any support I can get from you guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope everyone has a great time during the holidays. Please be safe. Take care. God bless. And until next time.